Good afternoon, everybody. It's Lemmy and Finisher. It is the 8th of August, 2013. Hail Mary, me tell you, as we have been adjusting the equipment to give us the best result. Um, we turned the amplifier down a little bit to help relieve some of the hot sound that we were having. Um, because we are hearing loss sometimes. It's hard to, I didn't mean Paul, get it right when you're not using a VU meter. Uh, today, we're going to talk about a couple different things. Um, as you know, I tend to focus more on the spiritual realm, and that's what we're going to talk about today, is your life chart. And um, Michelle, of course, has been keeping abreast of the political scene. I'm going to let Michelle um, go into more detail on this later on. But right now, here's a short and interesting gist. Obama wants to resurrect Section 201 of the Stop Online Piracy Act, which makes streaming unlicensed content illegal. Now, the problem with that would be, of course, is the idea is to make it a felony to uh, stream unlicensed content. But the problem is, is that our wonderful people over the MPAA and the RIAA have been making a lot of money on the civil cases to the point that they cannot say that they're not getting the just desserts. They certainly are. Um, and so this whole idea of making a, a felony is just makes no sense at all. Now, um, back so Michelle will go into more detail on that later because that's more of her style. And that's just how I would just point out to you is this is what we have with about rampant government intrusion in our lives today of course we're going to be talking on your life chart and what is it and how did you create it um the well, first thing you have to understand is we don't just come to earth once and then die and that's it it's first of all our lessons that we have to learn are often very complex and very detailed and just like in school it might take you a few times to finally um you know get proficient in any particular part of your life that you've been having hard times with. So sometimes you'll have to repeat um, a life lesson. But we choose so because we could do the equivalent to go to summer school if we wanted to, um, which means that we study things from the other side and, and not actually experience it again. Um, but for many people, because we all love Earth, because it is a part of our lives, it's been, you know, we have come here so many times. This is our home away from home and this has always been away this way earth is called hard knock university for good reason because this is a place where we come to learn tough lessons because it builds us to build character um good or bad it helps us to build character and um so how do you write a life chart or life plan well michelle and her case management team off to work on something called goal plans well, life chart is kind of the same basic idea. It's a very detailed um, list of objectives of what you want to do, what you want to learn. And as before you come here, your life chart also includes uh, your physical appearance. If you're going to come as a boy or a girl, um, if you're going to have a normal, be part of a normal pregnancy, if you're going to have handicaps, yes, we choose those handicaps when we come here um, because we want to learn certain things because of our handicapped people. We, uh, Michelle, of course, is legally blind, uh, and so am I, obviously, because I'm in her body. We happen to know that there are people in this world who come here wanting to understand what it's like to um, experience hard times, such as... Luke Gehrig's disease or ALS or, you know, spina bifida or things like that. These are choices that we made when we chose our life charts. We chose uh, the challenges that we'll have experiencing. Now, some people might say that's a bunch of belly boo, but I don't think so because I've seen a lot of people come here um, to master other challenges. And when we go home, by the way, we discuss this with our advisor, our spiritual advisor, which often could be your guardian angel or your spirit guide and your guardian angel. Of course, I'll work with you as well as Mother Asna through the uh, 
the uh, the uh, debriefing, if you call it that. Um, because remember, when, when you die, you remember you came here to learn a certain skill. It just happens to be funny because before you come here, your brain is erased temporarily or blocked of knowing that those things in your life charts. That's why people sometimes keep asking the silly questions, why am I here? You're here because you are here to learn something that you wanted to learn. Notice I said want. It's not like you're forced to be here. You don't even have to be here. You could actually choose to be on any other place in the universe. But we chose to be here. And it's just like that cat who chose to be over there sitting on top of the coffee table and just jumped off. Okay. It's all part of a divine um, plan. Now, we often talk about, okay, so why do we choose these challenges? Well, because we want to be well-rounded people. And to be well-rounded means that you have to understand and practice humility, kindness, patience, and, of course, um, desire in the pursuit of knowledge is a very strong piece of a perfect, um, well-rounded mind is to understand as well so you can so you can work with people. And because Michelle and I also are partially deaf as well as legally blind, we have to to try to be a little more careful to make sure that we don't misunderstand somebody's speech patterns. Unfortunately, it also means that we had to adapt our lives around our handicaps. So, for example, um, we don't talk on the phone very much because we can't hear. So, we use things like uh, teletouch devices for the deaf or TDDs. Um, to communicate with people when we have one, but it hasn't been maintained lately, but we do have a TDD unit as well. Um, because of the internet, we use uh, mail and we use uh, text options because of that reason. But now we're going to Michelle's eyesight. Um, we also run into another problem, which is, I think if there was ever a situation similar to Helen Keller, uh, if she was legally blind, this would be it. You're not totally blind and you're not totally deaf, but you've got some eyesight, you got some hearing. But the problem is, is that you need to learn to adapt to situations around you. I'm just summoning big fuzzball. Hey, fuzzball, fame. Come on, let me get you a pet. I haven't seen you up on stage for a while. Come on up, come on up. I want to just talk about handicaps. Let's talk about this guy real quick here. And uh, that'll be a whole nother topic is where do our pets come in? Our pets are very important, and we'll discuss that in a little bit. By the way, right now, I just wanted to give this guy a pet because he's always been part of our lives. Yeah, go ahead. Um, the, so our, our, dis, our disenfranchisement is not an accident. Okay, everything has a purpose, and we chose... Everything, that's the most important part of it, is what you chose all the terms before we pressed the enter button. Everything, from the economic situation we grow up into, to the hardships we face, to if we're going to have a drug alcohol addictions and things like that. So you're probably asking yourself a very question, does that mean that we also will choose... Um, if we're going to get involved with the dark entities, I mentioned those a lot. Unfortunately, the answer to that is yes, we do actually, um, because the dark entities are important to us because uh, they help us to either. This is the gamble we take. Um, the dark entities are the ones that help us either to complete our mission successfully by providing the proper hardship to makes us want to drive a little harder or we succumb to their vices and and becoming a dark soul ourselves and that's unfortunately that's a sad tragedy um but it does happen that you know we need to have the dark entities in our lives just so we need to have the angelic beings in our lives too we have both the um, and so it beings, we never really talked about this much. We did talk about them, but we did. I made a few mistakes. So let's make sure we get this straight. Spirit guides. Spirit guides, 
Well, you'll be working with them every day. These are people who have been on Earth at least one time. These are um, educated people. They have gone through the special training to be spirit guides. And they help you to deal with earthly challenges because they've been on Earth at least once. Um, Sylvia Brown talks about Francine. And Francine had only been on life Earth on one time. One time. But went through a lot of training to become Sylvia Brown's spare guide. It was a specialized training. Um, on the other hand, you have a typical spare guide is um, goes through several lives before they are certified to become a spare guide. And um, often, but not always, your spirit guide could be your twin soul. It could actually be your other divine half that remains behind on the other side to serve as your spirit guide. It doesn't have to be, but it could be, okay? For example, when I was on my earth back in uh, 1835 to 1910, it was Michelle would not have been able to be my spirit guide because she was living her own life uh, at the same time in Montana. So you got this situation where in that case you got another spirit guide is appointed by you to serve you in your mission now these people can bi-locate so they can still carry on their own everyday lives and um and they do and so they don't just but these people are humans okay they're human souls they're not uh and angels we're gonna get to the angels um more specifically uh, because, like I said before, the angel beings, I think I got a little confused about. Now, we got two, and we talked about the cherubim and seraphim. That is correct, I said to you. And also, we didn't really talk much about the principalities and the thrones. Principalities work with Jesus and Father Yahweh. The thrones work with Mother Asna. Okay, so you have those two groups of um, bodyguards. And everybody has at least one of those people in their lives acting as the big bodyguard. Okay? Everybody at least has one. It doesn't, they don't always, they're not there on the retainer 24 7 because they're very busy, but they're always there on call. And their job is to keep you safe. Okay? That's the main purpose of them. Um,. And I mention all this stuff because this is part of your life chart. You choose your spirit guide. You choose your economic hardships. You you choose your physical hardships. You choose your hair color. You choose your eye color. Um, you choose your body format. You choose if you're going to be a boy or a girl. You or a hermaphrodite even. You choose that. Okay. Everything is chosen by you prior to being born you even choose potentially seven up to seven exit paths when i say exit paths let's just call them what they are that's a way to quit the course you know of course you do get an incomplete in some cases but um like for example putting a gun to your head could actually be a pre is a predefined exit you actually have an exit in your life um if you complete the course and you skip all six exits, you still got to choose the last exit, which is the final exit. The final exit meaning that, you know, you go home. Okay? You clean out your dorm room. You go home because you're done with Earth University for this time. You go home. You spend your time with your family and friends on the other side. And then, of course, you go, if you choose, you come back again. Okay, because Earth University is a hard place to be, and it's not really easy for anyone to um, go through. It seems like it seems it is an eternity for us here on Earth. If I was to say to Michelle, um, you know, you still got another 40 years to go, Michelle probably would kind of roll her eyes up in the head and say, Oh, God, I'm tired of this. I'm 45 now. I have to see her for another 45 year, 40 years. I'll be 85. Um, and I probably would probably be start raving mad because of what's going on in the world around us. But Michelle and I have also realized that we are here for a reason. Everybody comes here for a reason. And there are people on this earth that have chose to come with a specific mission statement. Me and Michelle have focused on education and enlightenment. 
some people choose to come come here because they like to do the stuff that they do home they do here for example some people like music some people like the primary arts some people like drama um and so they want to take some of the stuff they do at home and bring it here to earth so that they can improve on uh, and learn more of you know, a situation that requires a lot more challenges to become better at it. So it's it's a really complicated situation overall. But the first thing I want to point out to you is every single person, no matter what your condition, are here because you choose to be here. There's no accidents, okay? Unlike it, and I don't disagree. I, I disagree with Ed when he says this. Um, I was born out of wedlock. I was an accident. Excuse me. No, you're not. No one's an accident. Everybody has a purpose for being here. Okay? Remember, we know ahead of time. Mother God and Father God know all the time. Remember, the only present, and they are, uh, what's the other one? Um... Well, they're everywhere. And they have much, much experience. They can go through backwards, forwards in time. And they can examine all the twists and turns and reality, causality. And the, um, um, so they know exactly, you know, what's going to happen to you. So here, maybe that brings a good question up. What about what some of these evangelicals talk about sin? You're going to sin. Because it's part of your growing up phase. Does that mean that there is no such thing as sin? Well, there's certainly transgressions, but I don't really know if they could really call them sins, because um, Mother God and Father God certainly know what you're going to do, what you got to do to improve and learn on your education. I think the so-called real sin would be is if you keep doing the same bullshit every time over and over again and you never learn your lesson. That's a, to me, that's a tragedy, not just a sin. But unfortunately, there are some people who are just that dense and they don't get it anyway. So for that reason, you know, yes, it's a sin, but no, it's not a sin. Okay, if that confuses you, I'm sorry, I tried. Um, we also are going to want to point out to you is that life on the other hand when we go home we go through the intake or debriefing if you will where we go through and we talk with our uh, our advisors and spirit guides and ask and we, we can ask questions not god doesn't judge us we actually judge our own performance um and we look at the situation we go to the hall of records and the hall of Rec um Hall of memory and we look back at the, watch the the video if you will of our life and go back and examine things that has happened and we ask ourselves could i have done this better could i have made better choices um and sometimes it's hard but now that you whole re full recall of your life chart when you return it's so easy to say you know look at because now you have more knowledge of what happened and say hey you know what this, you know, this this was a really big time for me. Um, I had a hard time with this situation. And, um, you know, so we learn to um, look at ourselves more objectively. Even though it's a comedy, I recommend you watch Defending Your, or Defending My Life, or Defending Your Life um, with Meryl Streep in it. It really is very interesting because it goes on some of this uh, topic that I'm talking about. Of course, it's a comedy, so there are some humorous moments on it with Meryl Streep and the other character. But it's a great movie. It really will educate you to how it all works. Even though some of it is kind of funny, um, the debriefing is certainly not normally quite as brutal as that. Um, but you can certainly see where the screens are used. Uh, for three-dimensional views of life around you. And so it's a wonderful time. Usually it takes, because there is no time on the other side. There is no feeling of time, okay? Because it, it's eternal, okay? So because time is eternal on the other side, you could actually, your, your, your debriefing could take, equivalent of Earth days, but actually may seem like a minute on the other side. Um, 
So the most important thing I want people to understand here about when you talk about the slave chart, it is complicated, it is detailed. It covers everything that you could ever imagine and then some things they probably missed. It's it's very refreshing to know that even if you screw up, you always can be relaxed and come back again and try again. Oh, by the way, what about suicide? I want to talk about that because that's also um, a bit of a lot of confusion about that as well. Suicide is actually could be just be very well be one of the seven planned exits. You actually have that does not mean that you failed the exam. It just means that you now got an incomplete and now you have to redo all over again the same condition all over again. In a normal circumstance, that is what happens. However, Mother God and Father God as well also realize that sometimes people take off take on more responsibilities than they can handle. And so in some cases, if they see that incomplete on your report, they're going to seriously ask you, did you really think this through before you chose this life, what you were getting into? And a lot of times, especially when it's a, when it's a newcomer to coming to Earth, they didn't. And then they kind of um, get kind of overwhelmed. Because um, quitters never win, and winners never quit. Okay, that sounds like a stupid cliche and in this case it isn't if you have successfully completed the course and even if you got a f in the class you can still at least say hey i studied i did the homework i did the classwork i did the coursework i have been through this i have been all the requirements of the program okay so i got an f but at least i tried and then you can at least then when you go home, you know, you can be asked by your spiritual advisor, Do you, would you like to try it again? There, you got a choice. You can either say yes, or you can do the equivalent of take the course um, uh, through the, on the other side um, as an academic exercise. It's really very interesting choices that we have. But remember, this is where um, Morgan Freeman talked about this, do we have free will? Michelle and I watched that episode and we have a question. According to some scientists, they say the answer is, is that humanity itself does not have free will because everything is pre-programmed. Okay, wait a second. If everything is pre-programmed like a computer, then how come we believe in free will? Because here's why. When we are home, we have free will. Once we execute the program, which is our life chart, it is a bit of a program. It's a, it's a structure. It's a schedule of events that are going to happen. And these events happen on a certain sequence of events. Okay? You may have co through antecedent possibilities of a decision tree. But in order to complete your life chart, you have to get back on the main path. Some people like to take detours, but... Some people like to go straight through from beginning to end. Um, so, yeah, we do have a limited amount of free will on Earth. It's when we go home, we have the most free will, that we can choose to do what we want. Because in the ideal situation, it doesn't matter one way or another. You're still going home in the end. Okay, the class the course will still end, and wherever you are is where, you know, it's you're going to go home at that point. Um, so... You can do the equivalent of go to, you know, the sorority house, the frat house, and drink beer and shoot drugs and act like an asshole and basically, you know, say, I'm not taking the rest of this class. It doesn't matter because you're going home anyway. You're going to go home either through um, drug and alcohol poisoning to choosing to go back to school, if you will, and finish the course and take the final exam and hopefully at least come out of it at least with something. And by the way, our, our spirit guide is always there with us to help us, to remind us when we have gotten off the road and also remind us how to get back on the road again. That's what our spirit guide does. It's a guide. It's not our, it's kind of like a case manager in a sense, except it doesn't actually 
case it is a case manager but it doesn't sit there and manage you it just gives you advice it's an advisory position more than anything but they do have access to um if they really need it they have access to resources such as you do too that's such as the principalities and the thrones if you really need help to get back on the right track if you've really really fallen into hard times um by the way if you are a dark soul you'll never see the other side okay i'm going to well explain this right now for those of you who don't know if you're dark or light sold if you're truly a dark soul you will never see the other side because only perfection can be in the other side okay and true adoration and pure of heart can be the other side dark entities do not belong there dark entities have their own places but basically in that case, when you're that entity, it's more like you're drafted into a military assignment. You are told, you're going to go here, boom, and you're going to do this, boom, here's your orders. Now get out there, soldier, and do it. That's what a dark entity's life is like. From grave to cradle, they are, they're constantly are marshaled into their actions. Okay? They got, they got a list of orders they have to do, and that's what they do. They don't matter if they fail or not. They do not have spirit guides, at least not um, from Mother Asana and Father Yahweh's other side. They don't have spirit guides. They have overseers, and they are, um, like I said, they don't really feel very good about themselves because basically they're not um, allowed to be them, you know, free because they've chosen to chose follow dark entities, and that's what they've become. Um, we talked about the grays. I'm not going to go into all the detail on this again because it's just been repeated so many times over here. Um, but there are people who actually were dark and have chosen and said, you know, have, you know, because they do have a little bit of ability. Everybody does. They can throw it down the gauntlet and say to dark entities, you know what? You can take this job and shove it up your ass. I want out of here. I want out of here. And you're not holding me back. And so there are dark entities that will try to become that of the children of the light and in some cases they do succeed it's rare but some do actually succeed of leaving the darkness to return to the light but others unfortunately never do of course it's more likely possibly that the, the the light will end up becoming a dark entity because of the fact that it's sometimes we see especially in our lifely experience um some of the stuff that we see the dark entities doing it looks so cool and we want to be part of it our wonderful people over there in hollywood are a lot of them are dark entities and they are been you can always tell because they're the ones who seem to be chasing these evil sinful sin, sinful dreams um i'm not going to go into all the details on that but you know from reading the tabloid magazines and entertainment magazines that i'm talking about <sighs> In Hollywood, there are very few Christians, and there are very few truly pure spirits. There is a lot of dark entities. There are some good ones, but they are also very aware of the dangers of being in an industry that is so morally corrupt. Um, if you try to be goody-goody in an industry that talks about depravity and indecency, you are going to find yourself out of a job fast, very quickly. So um we can um we need to know about that and that's something i already discussed the dark entities and the yellow beings how many times i said we're talking about us so now does that mean that we should be afraid of death well that's a that's a very good question because first of all are you a dark entity or are you a light entity you can know that answer you know that in your heart it really does are you a dark entity or are you a light entity or are you a gray entity if you are a light entity you have nothing to fear when it's time to go home you have nothing to fear you will be going home and you'll see your loved ones your pets yes your pets my cats fluffy morris tiger the original fluffy whatever all my pets from this life all my pets from my prior lives all my pets from the lives before that i will see them all again and they will be there waiting for me but they will be the first ones who notice my return 
or coming home. And then, of course, the people come next, the whole loved ones, relatives that we learned and met and stuff, is we'll meet people from our prior lives and our future and our lives that we're living now. It's a wonderful time. It really is. So you really should not be afraid of death. Now, if you're a dark entity, well, your fear is a little more um, just or palpable because you know that the minute you die, you're born again into somebody else's body. They assign you the body. They assign you your orders, and that's it. You don't have a free will. You don't have the choice to say, I'm sorry, I'm not going to do this right now. I, I'm not going to do this right now. It doesn't matter. Your boss says, listen, soldier, here's your work ticket. Actually, it's more like this. Here is your orders. Big fat book of them, right? Big fat book. You are going to do what I tell you, soldier, or else. You're going to do my instructions or else. For this is what the committee said you will do, soldier. Now get out there, you maggot. Do it. Now that's what they do. That's, that's what they do. Unfortunately, unfortunately, after a while, some people in the dark entities get tired of that. Yes, by the way, in case you wonder, can the dark entities ever, ever finally seek Father and Mother God? The answer is yes. They will be absorbed. In the end of all creation, they will be absorbed back into the divine consciousness of both Mother and Father God. And it will happen. Because it has to happen. Because Mother and God loves, Mother and Father God loves you so much that no matter how you do it, you are part of the divine consciousness, good and bad alike. So you will be reabsorbed into that, as will Michelle, as will I, as will everyone else. And there's nothing wrong with that. So the main thing I want to get you to understand is don't worry if you make mistakes. Because you got a couple friends that are always there with you. Your spirit guide is always there with you. And, you know, you are you got the support of Mother Asna and Father Yahweh. And the principality and the thrones. And you can always go home to the other side anytime you want. You can just go home through astral travel, through uh, meditation, whatever. And you can also receive healings from the other side as well. Because you're, our relatives on the other side know us. And they're always praying for us. And they're always praying that we do good. So... But if you ever feel like you need to do an act, uh, an act of contrition, there's a Catholic ritual, which you can say, you don't have to do the actual striking the breast. Um, two hours ago, Michelle, you know this better than me. Um, I have sinned in my own thoughts, in my words, in my deeds, and what I've done and what I've failed to do. And I ask, you, my brothers and sisters, all the angels and saints, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And that's all you have to say. You don't have to do anything else. You don't have to do. You don't have to strike your breast three times. Oh, yeah, you can. Some people do. Every Catholic knows this ritual. It's part of the order of the Mass. Okay, and it's important. If anything it does is it acknowledges your humility and it says to you, it's okay, I screwed up. That's all right. Everybody does. So don't be hard on yourself if you screw up. Just try to fix what you screwed up so you don't do it again. That's all. You know, by first acknowledging your faults and your flaws, and then you can work on fixing where you fall, you have fallen. And your spirit guide will always do that. As I said, spirit guides are chosen by you. You choose whoever the spirit guide is going to be. So everybody, um, it does not necessarily need to be your twin soul. Sometimes twin souls don't get along. Okay, because sometimes they're very different. But it could be a friend. It could be somebody who, you know, a prior life that you've developed a very strong relationship bond to. It could be... Um, everybody can receive these blessings of choosing who the spirit guide is going to be. Um, there are so many videos on uh, spirit guides out there on the internet that you could probably go and get lost about that. There's not quite as many on Twin Souls and Twin Flames, but there are some. Um, Helen Demetrio talks about a couple of them. Sylvia Brown does. 
um, in 5D t um, talks about them as does um, a few other channels. So just look up Twin Flames. That doesn't necessarily represent uh, two souls, one body. That's you do search for that, you're gonna find um, Abigail and Brittany Hensel, which is really fascinating because it's kind of like me and Michelle, except they have two physically separate heads and uh, and one trunk. And it's really these these young ladies are now graduated from college and they are uh, doing very well, as you know, two sisters could ever do. It's amazing um, the cooperation and collaboration that they have to do to. Um, get this done together. Well, actually, why don't we talk about that for a second really quickly, if I may. When you have two people in one physical body, like the Abigail and Hensel tins, um, the first question is, when these two young ladies were writing their life charts, clearly they knew that they were going to be coming to Earth together. So they had to collaborate from the very beginning with their life chart just as me and Michelle had done with ours. Um, me and L Michelle's chart was a little bit different than theirs, but basically the whole point was, is they wanted to experience being conjoined twins and living in a loving, wonderful um, home. And they do, and they've very, been very happy. And I think it's a wonderful thing, but it's not something everybody's gonna choose to do. But I also would like to hear from you, and because uh, it's getting a little warm in here. It's very humid right now. It's overcast, but it's humid. Um, so, you know, I'm going to just get ready to wrap this up. But please do comment, okay? I've always been open to your comments, and I want to hear from you. And um, like, I, like I said in Michelle's video, yes, um, on, uh, which was published uh, yesterday, we're going to try to get some new things up here in the studio and um, um, we got some changes we're working on. It's going to take a while to get those to happen because of money. And one of the things is I want to start having a new introductory opening video segment of my videos. And Michelle, I don't know if she's got something planned different, but in my case, um, I'm going to work on the introductory opening segments. But... Um, I think Michelle was going to spend some time talking to you about um, the Section 201 of SOPA that they want to try to revive. Uh, and that'll be her video. I don't know when she's going to discuss it. I haven't asked her. So, I'm going to let you go. And if you please leave your comments below. Yes, right down there in the comments section. And also, please don't forget you can also email me privately if you don't want to make it a public message. You can email it to L-U-M-I-F-I-N-I-S-T-R-A at gmail.com. So that's Lumifinistra at gmail.com. And, of course, you can always, if you're seeing this through another source, such as Michelle's um, copying this on her Facebook or um, Blogger or Twitter, please, uh, you can always get to the main page by writing, uh, by going using our tiny URL always works better www.tinyurl.com forward slash l-u-m-i-f-i-n-i-s-t-r-a so that's www.tinyurl.com forward slash let me finish draw and you can come here um, we do have a phone number but I don't remember it right now we have a public phone number also for comments uh, Michelle will have to I think it's, I, I could be wrong on this. I think it is 860-469-2821. That's right. Okay. So 860-469-2821. And you can also send us text messages to that number too. This is a Google Plus number for Google Voice. So you can reach us through that as well. So we got all these different ways that you can reach us. And if we are not answering the phone for whatever reason, which we don't always run the app, just leave a message. Please talk slowly and take your time so that the voice to text program can transcribe your message into English for us to read. If you are not an English speaking person, um, please use um, 
any kinds of means possible to translate your native language into English, and we will gladly love to hear from you. And that's some of the wonderful things that we do. And um, so that's about it, folks. See you soon. And don't worry about if you screw up. It's okay. Everybody does, even me. So, you know, that's the most important thing is that we all have the opportunity to enjoy this time of Earth. You've more than likely been here more than once. And then also don't be afraid of, you know, when it's time to go home. Because unless you really are a dark entity, there's nothing really to be afraid of. Really. Okay. Bye-bye.